Hi, I'm Dave Goldberg, a faculty member at the University of Illinois and co-director of the Illinois Foundry for Innovation and Engineering Education. And today I want to talk to you about what engineers don't learn and why they don't learn it. We've, been, we've embarked here in the iFoundry process on a process of engineering education transformation. And one of the difficult problems is to understand what our students don't know and how to, how to fix that. An entry point for understanding these problems is, is, is brought to mind by reflecting on the interface between a senior design project and a fairly traditional curriculum. In general engineering, we've, been, we've had industrial-based senior design going back to uh, the 1970s. And in, in this particular course, teams of three students with a faculty advisor solve a real-world project where the companies provide some money to uh, help support the project. So the students go on the plan trip, and that's a perfect time to ask, what is it that the students don't know? And so in the following sequence, I'm going to identify some problems and present iconic figures from intellectual history or philosophy, uh, usually, um, that represent the, the problems that our students, our students face. The first problem they have is they go on the plant trip and they need to ask questions. They need to probe what the problem really is, but they don't know how to ask really good questions. And so we coach them and, and they're able to, to get by, but one of the problems they have is how to ask questions. And here the iconic figure that we use is, is uh, the person who taught uh, Western civilization how to ask uh, Socrates. A second problem they have is labeling the problems they see. Labeling ordinary things in technology is difficult for our students. And moreover, labeling phenomena they see in, that haven't been identified is, is hard for them. They have trouble giving things names, either accepted names or new names. And here are the iconic figure we use is that master of naming and categorization, Aristotle. They have trouble modeling. If, if they can plug into an equation, of course, they can do quite well because that's what they've been taught how to do. But when it comes to modeling things qualitatively, either in causal form, this leads to this, or categorical form, this thing con consists of these components, they have difficulty um, making those kinds of qualitative models. And so, um, and here are the iconic figures we use are uh, for, uh, David Hume uh, and his, his, his work in trying to understand causality or, or Aristotle and uh, a master categorizer if there ever was one. So we get them to the point, they understand the problem, they understand how to model it in their minds qualitatively, maybe even quantitatively, and now they have to go solve the problem and they they have difficulty decomposing the large problem into little problems that are themselves solvable. And so here the iconic figure is Rene Descartes. Um, and, uh, and, and usually these problems are such that they do need to decompose them into smaller, uh, smaller ones. Their first reflexes are to resort to equations and, and exact uh, or mathematical or computer models but oftentimes, engineering problems require that they, they go get some data in the real world. And um, so there we, we use uh, a British empiricist John Locke as our, as our iconic figure. But oftentimes, they, their reflexes need to, to be uh, reoriented so that they go out and measure things that help them solve the problem. They have difficulty. Um, uh, sketching and drawing and visualizing solutions to the problem. And, and engineering graphics has been minimized in the curriculum over the years, and um, some uh, for, uh, has suggested that that's a problem. Uh, maybe the iconic figures here might be da Vinci, da Vinci or the, um, uh, the inventor of descriptive geometry, uh, Monge. And then finally, they solve the problem, they've done a nice job, and now they have to go present it or they have to write it up. And what we have here is a failure to communicate. And the iconic figure we use is uh, uh, Paul Newman as Cool Hand, as cool hand Luke and, and, and the famous line that I just gave. So if we look at this all together, after four years, we, there are problems in our uh, that, might, we, uh, that if this were an industrial process, we might call massive quality 
uh, problems of being able to question, label, model conceptually, decompose, measure, visualize, and communicate. Um, and if this were an, industri uh, an industrial process or a manufacturing line, we'd be appalled um, by uh, how our, quote, product wasn't meeting spec. From the standpoint of transforming engineering education, however, identifying these difficulties is an important step to being able to modify the curriculum to create more effective engineers who can go out into the world and solve real world problems.